Hey, everybody, I got a new book for you. It's called We the Kids. So we're going to let the kids learn about the Constitution, which is the law, the supreme law that governs our country. If it doesn't match the Constitution, it can't be used. Starts with a nice pen here. I love this. Big words and big ideas. This is from David Ketro. He's the person who wrote this book, and this is why he wrote it. The first time I was forced to think about the Constitution was in fifth grade. President's Day was coming up, and my teacher, Mrs. Baldwin, wanted to talk about big ideas. Stuff like freedom and liberty and founding fathers and presidents. I sat doodling a picture of George Washington riding the red 27-inch Johnny Ginger mountain ranger bike I hope to get to my next birthday. Of course, you know, he's not really paying attention, is it? Not too, just a little bit too young to understand what this is about. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, she recited, secure the blessings of liberty and to ourselves and our posterity. I remember thinking, man, why couldn't the guys who wrote this just use regular English? Establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. But I guess that's just how everyone talked back then in the olden times. Like my grandfather, who always was saying, like, rip snorting and, uh, and horn swoggling and, uh, and rudy tooty. I'm a much older guy now, and I've figured out that the Constitution is simply a list of rules and promises written down by people just like you and me. Some were tall, some were short, some were thin, fat, or hairy, and all of them used to be kids. So you definitely don't have to be a grown-up to understand what they wrote, which is really important. Everybody should understand the Constitution, especially kids, because as they're growing up, they want to know why adults make the decisions like this. For me, the Constitution was a kind of how-to book showing us ways to have happiness, safety, and comfort. Sounds like common sense, right? But a couple of hundred years ago, those things weren't common at all. For instance, back then, if you said or wrote something and the people in charge didn't like it, they could put you in jail or stick tar and feathers all over you. Ouch, and they'd melt tar, put it on you, and then put the feathers on, and <sighs> horrible. Now, even though a lot has changed, if you listen, the rules in our constitution will make good sense and tar is used to make highways, and feathers are strictly for the birds. Tar feathering was really bad, by the way, because you have to heat that tar. Really bad. A few years ago, I went and saw the real Constitution in Washington, D.C. I did too. That was really, really cool. Uh, it was old, brown, crackly-looking thing with curly handwriting that almost was impossible to read. But when it was new, it gave us rights and privileges that no one had ever had before. It let us decide for ourselves what kind of life we wanted to have. At certain times, I wanted to be a garbage man, a baseball player, a brain surgeon, an airline pilot. Instead, I became a dad, an artist, and a political cartoonist. When I paint my paintings to draw my cartoons, I can do them in any way that I want. Being able to do that makes me feel very happy and very free. And I think that's exactly what all those old guys with the big words and big ideas wanted for themselves, for me, for other grown-ups, and maybe even for you. For you out sitting out there. Now, this picture is a famous picture I got in Philadelphia. It's from, uh, I took a picture of it. It is from the Constitutional Convention, and they're all arguing back and forth on what to do for each of the different uh, states and all the different laws, because they had to come together. And like, you know, the best way to put it like this is that if somebody left and took off and took the ball and went home, then we couldn't play. And if they didn't come together, then we'd be open to England and whatever country, Spain, France, whatever one come in and take us over. So basically this is where we got together to make decisions. We the people of the United States. That's everybody, everybody. in order to form a more perfect union. They're going camping, here's a cute, I think it's cute, they're going up here. You can see they're taking their pizza with them, and then they're, the dog's helping them, you got the two friends getting out, they have a map, they have a map. Establish justice. 
Again, he like to hear the rules. They're saying rules uh, make them fair and that everybody shares. Oh, <laughs> no pulling the hair. Oh, no pulling the hair. Okay, so these are all the rules that they made here. You know what you could do? You could take this like a state. This is, let's say this is a state right here, and this established justice page. Each of the states can make their own rules. Maybe if it's somebody else, they're going to make different rules. Just like in your houses. Each of your houses have different rules. Like one of the rules I have is no cell phones at the table. The other rule I have is that we are all trying to discuss things instead of getting upset at each other. Ensure domestic tranquility. Now, domestic means peace of, like, the people, uh, nice and calm. The, the people that are that are part of the United States. Tranquility means to be calm. Like in our classroom, when we are not tranquil, we can't learn. But all the time, you can, you can be tranquil, tran uh, tranquil, but not also. You don't have to be submissive. Being tranquil means, all right, let's talk about it. Let me show you my idea. Let me show you your idea. And let's go from here. Here's why I agree. You know, all that is tranquility, but doing it in peace instead of beating each other up. Provide for the common defense. All right, this is really important. We have to make sure that everybody in the United States is safe. And the way we do that is we give part of our income to the government to buy things like aircraft carriers and stuff like that. Now that's important because sometimes the government doesn't do, the federal government doesn't do what we want with the money. Like for example, some people don't like that uh, we have drones that fly over and just surprise people out of nowhere. There's some people that don't want to build another aircraft carrier. So basically, remember, we are all responsible for what our government does. Now, there's two things you can do. One, you can leave. All right, if, you don't, if this government is not doing what you want it to do, then you can leave. But the other thing, if the government's doing something it's not supposed to do in your eyes, then you take action. You talk to your families, you talk to your congressmen, you write letters, and maybe even, like for example, uh, you decide to become a policeman so you have more control, or maybe I'm not more control and make things fair, or maybe you, um, Maybe you become uh, a governor or a representative and your voice is then heard. And then you can guide the people to think the way that you think they needs to go. Promote the general welfare. Listen, everything that goes on is about the general welfare. It's just like in your family. When, when your mom and dad make decisions, they should be thinking about the family, how it's good for everybody not just one person, okay? And our governments, both governments, state and federal governments, need to be seeing how to make it fair. If they can't make it fair, then that means they're not following the Constitution. Now remember, fair in your eyes may, be, may not be the same. Right now we have Republicans and Democrats and they have both have different ideas where this country needs to go. And somebody's always screaming, that's not fair! Well then, if it's not fair, then show everybody how it's not fair and find people to follow your idea. Otherwise, follow the law. And secure the blessings of liberty. What are the blessings of liberty? You get to get up anytime you want. You get to work at whatever you want to do. You can travel. You can sell things. You can, you can voice your opinion. You can do whatever you want as long as it doesn't violate somebody else's rights. So remember when we're talking about blessings of liberty, everybody has a different idea of what liberty may be. But one thing for sure liberty does is it protects the rights of everybody and balances those rights. To ourselves and our posterity, it's not you. If you think this whole thing is about you, you're wrong. Someone came before you, and someone is coming after you, behind you. They're going to be your ancestors. You want the United States to be calm, cool, collective, 
protecting liberty, not just for you, but for everybody that's connected to the United States, everybody. And of course, if we are like that, if we are solid, strong, and, and thoughtful, then everybody will be uh, protected by the Constitution and will have uh, will, and will have freedom. Do ordain and establish this Constitution. Now look, it's really important you understand this. Sometimes your mom and your dad just lay the line. You are not going to leave your room until it's clean. I ordain that's going to happen. Right? You are not going to play video games until you're done washing the dishes. Dishes. That is ordained. This is what's going to happen. Okay? Now, you may not think it's fair, but it doesn't matter because you are their children and you're part of that household and they're having you do your part. Okay? This is a big deal here. In this situation, the people of the United States ordained and established the Constitution. They said, this is the Constitution. This is what's going to happen. We're going to do it this way. And the reason why it has to be ordained and established is because you do not want to be in a sailboat without a sail or a rudder. The Constitution is our guide. It's what tells us where and when to do something. It says, no, this isn't right because it's not fair. A good example of that is women. Uh, women till 19, 1920 could not vote. It wasn't until the 19th Amendment when we changed things that allowed women to vote. And after that, from then on, there's no way to stop uh, legally a woman to vote. And there's a lot of things that are like that. So ordain and establish means that this is the way it's going to be. For the United States of America. It's really important you understand this. The United States of America is not one country. It's not. It's 50 countries working together under a federal umbrella of federal of federal government working together uh, the way the best way to look at this is that each state can make its own laws even right now in California and several other states like Colorado they have allowed the use of marijuana now I personally don't think that's a very good idea but that's what they decided to do the people voted for it but the federal government still says it's illegal so if uh, you are caught by a federal someone, let's say you go into the, the post office or you go into a courtroom or something, uh, and it's a federal courtroom, then you can get in trouble for having marijuana. But they can't come looking for you without the a probable cause. They can't come in and just search you for any, any reason. So remember, each state has its own idea on how to handle, how to handle things. And like I said before, California, Nebraska, Florida, Texas, they're all different little countries that are giving certain powers to the government, including us paying taxes to them, including letting them get, defend us, including going out and talking to other governments. So remember, we're talking about we the, we the people, we're talking about we're responsible for it, but we're giving powers to the people that guide us. Now, if you don't like what's going on in this country, then write letters run for office and fix it. Whatever you do, don't let someone think for you. You are we the people.